I've had a great time here. This has been a really amazing uh, last few days. I've, you know, I keep hearing a lot about Athens. It's my first time here. Uh, so it's almost kind of like a pilgrimage of coming into checking out this town. Uh, and, and you know, and, and you guys have a pretty, pretty amazing art program here. So get to see that firsthand and getting, meeting a lot of the graduate students and seeing the faculty here. So that's, it's been, it's been an amazing experience. I'm getting a really good cross-section of the, of the program too. So I've been meeting with the people in printmaking, people in uh, people working in photo, uh, met with several people in sculpture and metals this morning. So uh, yeah, and I think uh, a couple of painters later on today. You know, it's one of those moments in my life where my life just got turned upside down completely. Like literally, I just got picked up and turned upside down and spun around. And so I spent literally the next who knows how long, I mean, maybe even right, even to this moment, trying to understand what just happened. What was that? Because, you know, when you're that close to being shipped off to Gitmo, because you don't know what's happening, uh, it's a pretty frightening experience. I mean, that's, that's when things get real. When I first started that, when, when it was first happening, or when, when, when the investigation took place, those, those, ha those six months, half a year of my life, when I had to go through that investigation, um, you know, the last thing on my mind was that, hey, I got new material for art projects. That's the last thing on my mind. My, at that, that, that moment, everything was about how do I get out of this? How do I survive? What's, how can I, how can I get out and actually have a normal life. And I think, you know, one of, one of the things that artists have a different level of agency. Artists have a different way of reacting to situations. Artists don't, you know, artists don't respond the, in a typical manner that you'd expect everyone else to. I think that's what makes artists different and that's what makes us, that's, that's, that is our job. Our job is to see the world differently. Had I been Hassan the cab driver, this would have been very different than Hassan being the artist and professor. I think these are very different contexts and very different situations. Let's put it this way. Uh, the scary situation is that there's only a handful of people that I know of that's been investigated for or in something uh, FBI, uh, by the FBI for suspicions of terrorism and has been released. And most of us tend to be artists or academics. So either we're the only ones that got taken in, or there are many, 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 many that either aren't talking or can't talk for whatever reason. So it's a pretty frightening situation. Uh, and, and, and I think, you know, it's one of those things where I think as artists and also as academics, you have a different way of reading. You can hold up information differently. You can hold up a mirror to it. And we have other abilities uh, beyond just reacting to something in the traditional norm. One of the, one of the really great things about art and, and working as an artist is the fact that it lets me uh, entry points into just about anything and everything else. So a lot of my, my work is very much, I mean, so using the idea of, of, of the value of intelligence or the value of information, that's, in, that's borrowed directly from the principles of economics. Uh, so, you're, and it's a very simple principle of economics, but nonetheless reading it as, well, what happens when you flood information? What happens when you're devaluing currency of an intelligence agency? These are some pretty big, 
situations. Also, you know, the work can be read through other uh, disciplines. Uh, I mean, I work full, closely with a physicist about predictive behavior and where things will be at what points in time. Uh, archives are natural library sciences. I mean, this is like, how do I catalog 65,000 images? You know, and I have these like really oddball little characters, uh, these um, things like I have, I have an entire database of parking lots off of Interstate 80 that I've slept in overnights. I mean, so something as specific as that, all the way down to, uh, I can call up every image taken in Slovenia. Uh, so it could be incredibly vague like that, or incredibly specific down to, these are the specific tacos eaten in Mexico City between July 5th and July 7th. Uh, so, and, but again, because I'm in control of it, I have this, I have, and, and, and as an artist, you get this creative license to create those databases and to create those categories. And yes, some of them may not at first be, be seemingly relevant to the other databases, which actually might be of, these are all my phone records, or these are all my banking transactions. But then again, this could be, these are all the banking transactions where I bought a chili dog at 7-Eleven. So they mean something very different. So I, and, and, the, and it goes in as, in, into those types of details in this, in this body of work. Now with, the, with the students, a lot of it is just talking about you know, the realities of being an artist, the realities of, of how, do you, how do you come up with a sustainable art practice? How do you evaluate ideas and how do you decide which ones to pursue, which ones not to pursue? How do you take the how do you make the most of, a, of a, an experience of a very finite amount of time in graduate school and how do you get the most out of it?